Beware politicians preaching positive indicators. They'll bright side you until you're broke. So says Barbara Ehrenreich in a new book of the same title. The gospel of green shoots is a crock, she says, which we'd better simply smash if we're ever going to get the anger up to make real change. Barbara Ehrenreich is the author of the runaway bestseller Nickel and Dimed. Her book Bright Sided, How the Relentless Promotion of Positive Thinking Has Undermined America, is just out. Barbara, welcome back to Grit TV. Glad to have well, you. Good to be with you, Laura. So what's your beef with the Bright Siders? <laughs> well, this started in a very personal way. Uh, I, I was treated for breast cancer about eight years ago. And, you know, was shocked, naturally upset, and reached out uh, through the internet and, you know, by buying books and going to support groups in every way I could for information and support, you know, from other people who would had the disease. And uh, what I found was very different, though. What I found was these constant exhortations to be positive, to be cheerful, to be upbeat. In fact, you wouldn't get better if you weren't positive and upbeat. Which this, I have since found out, applies to all kinds of can you know, cancer patients. So all those people who are out there this last week, it's Breast Cancer Awareness, Awareness Month, running for a cure for the Komen Foundation, actually doing us harm? No, no, I wouldn't be that mean, Laura. <laughs> but I, I would say, uh, though, that, y you know, we don't know the cause, never mind the cure. We know that uh, breast cancer, for example, is much more uh, prevalent in industrialized countries. We, but we have no idea what it might be that is causing that. Uh, I think it's very important to get to the cause, which is probably something environmental, and do something about that. And also, um, you know, I come out of the women's health movement, the feminists who are really concerned about how women are treated by the medical profession. I think there's something wrong with our cancer treatments in, you know, in this country, the huge use of chemotherapy, which is very, very disabling. Now, I'm not saying, no, just go with a green tea or mm -hmm. something. I would, I would not say that. But I'm just saying that it's another thing that made me angry. You know, why is there this disease? Uh, and why don't we have some treatments that are not so toxic to people? And instead of being angry, we're out there trying to improve our attitude. You say that bleeds through into even how we think about markets, the economy, oh, lending, yeah. so and So I thought this was just something odd that had to do with the whole pink ribbon breast cancer culture. And until I began to encounter it in you know, researching about the corporate world, I was researching about layoffs, even before this downturn. And you know, I was shocked to find the people getting the pink slip also got the uh, sort of rosy colored glasses, you know, they were told. You know, think of this as an opportunity. You're losing your job, but it's a transition, something better, just like, you know, the cancer patient is told. And it's a way, it, it seemed very clear to me that, that this is, um, well, one, it's cruel, you know, to tell someone who's in a terrible situation to completely suppress their grief and anger, um, but also that it's a kind of method of social control. Mm. Who's to blame? Is it Calvin, N Norman, Vincent Peale? A lot of people get blamed in here. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I have never had much love for Calvinism. And the, the kindest thing I could say about America's positive thinking ideology, because it does come from this country, is that it started as a reaction to Calvinism in the early 19th century. You know, people were tired of hearing that they were damned, that they were wretched, that they had to spend all their time examining their souls for sin or signs of sin. And so along came these people, some of whom were very interesting kind of lay healers, and said, hey, forget about that. Life is not so bad, you know, and you, you, you're not innately sinful and sick and so forth. So that was, I'm all with that. By the 20th century, though, it had become increasingly tied to money mm. as an issue, a way to get prosperous. I didn't realize this. I'd missed out on this somehow. Uh, that was the power of positive thinking and so forth. This is how you become, achieve wealth. Uh, then in the 80s and 90s, with the age of downsizing, the big corporations really began to pour money into mm -hmm. this and through motivational speakers, motivational books, because it was a way to smooth over the way they were treating workers. Was it different in the 1920s and 30s from the sort of worker side of things? 
Well, I think what we've lost in just the last 15 years is any idea of a lifetime job, is uh, the ideas of job security that used to go with either being a skilled blue collar worker or being a uh, college educated white collar worker, all gone. But people didn't tell workers being laid off in the so-called Great Depression that it was somehow their fault and they needed to improve their attitude, or did they? No, no, not not at that time. But it, it became kind of, kind of systematic in the 1980s and 1990s as this churning out of white collar people intensified. And I think it had a lot to do with the economic the meltdown because it became prohibi prohibited in the American workplace to be negative, mm. to raise a question. To say, hey, uh, what about our subprime exposure here or something? People were fired for that you in 06 and 07. Pharmaceutical companies hired cheerleaders. They do. <laughs> they hire cheerleaders to be the, the sales reps who go around to the doctor's offices because you have to be bright and perky and, I guess, pretty. I mean, most doctors are still male. Uh, so, yeah, that that's whole emphasis on being a positive person is the most important thing, more important than your skills, more important than, than your hard work, just what you kind of radiate out to other people. Well,